One of the things that I enjoy, no, over here, right here, see, right here. Yeah. One of the things that I enjoy about recording these and about the way that we do it is that we don't put on any special functions or make everything super perfect. We don't try to get the exact camera angle or the right volume. We just try to be real. And you know, that's what God wants from you. He doesn't want you to come to him and say, hey, you know, let me first get all cleaned up, God. Let me get my holy robes on. Let me clean my face up. Let me comb my hair. Let me put on my makeup. Let me get my lips just right. Let me put on my eyelashes. Let me get my contacts in. You know, and then I can talk to you, God. As a matter of fact, God doesn't work quite that way. God sees you, bluntly, when you're in the bathroom. He sees you when you're <laughs> doing your duty, so to speak. You're morning constitutional. God saw you when you were born. Boy, wasn't that a bloody mess. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, we can't talk like that. It's not the Christian thing to do, but it might be the godly thing. Because you see, God already knows all that you're thinking. He already knows all that you thought or that you might conceive of. So trying to hide anything from him is kind of ridiculous. It's almost like... <laughs> Who are you going to hide it from? I mean, let's be real. You're only hiding it from yourself and your own self-righteousness. Because as far as God is concerned, your righteousness, bluntly, is just filthy rags. You can't get cleaned up. You can't get fixed up. You can't walk wholly into the Lord. Matter of fact, every time you try, I'll bet you fell down. Am I right? I'll bet every time that you think you thought you had it all together, Long about that time, whether within a year or a month or a day, a week, an hour, or even a minute, something or someone came along and really screwed up the idea that you thought you were perfect or that you had it all together or that your grace covered you because you went out and blew it. <laughs> Guess what? God knew that too. As a matter of fact, I think God knows a whole lot more about you than you do. And you know what I like about that? I like the idea that God knows a whole lot more about me than I do. Because what little I know about me... <laughs> oh, man. I don't know about you, but you know, I got some things that I'd rather not know about me. Maybe you'd rather not know about me, too. <laughs> Let me tell you, not everything is hunky and rosy, you know, all the time. There are times that I blow it. There are times that you blow it. Matter of fact, I think that's why God gave us his son, was because he knew that we could not live up to our own standard of righteousness. Even if we set one, we would judge people according to some idea that we had, but we would, of course, not live up to our own idea. No, we would just judge others that way. Come on now, be real. You do it too. And he knew that we couldn't measure up to his righteousness because he said, here's the bar and you can't reach it. <laughs> it's too far. But we're going to try. We're going to use poles and we're going to try to pole vault our way to heaven. We're going to use rockets and jets and planes and we're going to try to fly our way to heaven. <laughs> we're going to make up our own religion you know, and try to work our way to heaven. I mean, come on now. How many different ways have we tried, really, to get to God and failed miserably? You know as well as I do. You can't get to God, but God can get to you. You know what I mean. At some point in time, God had to have broken through your own stubbornness and somehow you thought you were reaching out to God and calling on him and getting saved. And the bottom line is, God set you up kind of to be in the right place at the right time so he could talk to you. So he could get through to you. 
so that you would be listening to him and not to your own ideas. When you look at it that way, doesn't it make sense that if he already knows you that well, that maybe we ought to spend a little more time getting to know him better than what we do now? I think so. Personally, I think he's got more in store for us than we have in store for us, because if we really went by our own righteousness, man, I'd get rid of me as fast as I could. Because <laughs> personally, I think he could find someone else to do a better job. Don't you? I mean, look at what we're doing. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're even reaching for the wrong pair of glasses, I think. Ah, I can't see in these. But God, in his mercy and in his love, chose you just like he chose me. Why? I don't know. I don't know what you're like. But I know what I'm like, so... When I think about it, I'm kind of dumbfounded and amazed, grateful, thank you, God, for being saved, but at the same time, you know, I don't think there's anything particularly special about me any more than I think there's anything particularly special about you, except for one thing, Jesus died for you. Radiate joy. Not only must you rejoice, but your joy must be made manifest. Known unto all men, a candle must not be set under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that it may give light to all who are in the house. Men, and women, I guess, must see and know your joy, and seeing it, know without any doubt that it springs from trust in me, from living with me, from knowing me. The hard dull way of resignation is not my way. Dead religion is not what I accomplished. When I entered Jerusalem, knowing well that scorn and reviling and death awaited me, it was with cries of Hosanna and with the triumphal procession. Not just a few lost cause followers creeping with me into their city. There was no note of sadness in my last supper talk with my disciples. And when we had sung a hymn, we went out unto the Mount of Olives. So trust, so conquer, so enjoy and have joy. Love colors the way and love takes the sting out of the wind of adversity. Love and love and love of me, the consciousness of my presence and that of my Father, we are one, and he who is love is God, and God is love and he is my Father. So. In that love that he has given you in the demonstration that he loved you so much that he gave you his son, what more do we need to worry about? He knows how bad you are. He knows how rough you are. Matter of fact, he knows how corrupt you are. And you know what? You know what's really amazing? He loves you anyways.